Hello. In our last video, we showed you how to track your spending and calculate your net worth so that you know where you stand financially. And you're either spending more than you make every month, you're living paycheck to paycheck, or you spend less than you earn. You might have noticed that we haven't mentioned the dreaded B word yet, budget. And we're not gonna do that this week either. And that's because, like we said last week, before we can set a new course, we need to know which direction we're heading. And we're gonna start that this week by analyzing our spending. This video is going to be the most difficult to make because we want to talk to you as if you are a friend sitting right in front of us, not like a professional or an advisor. But since we can't physically see your budget, we have to lump everyone together and that kind of makes things a little vague. But in the future, when we talk about things like credit cards and taxes and investing, the advice is a lot more universal, but we'll take a whack at it anyways. And we'll use a stand-in budget, or a proxy if you will, of the Consumer Expendables Report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2013. Okay, let's get started. First thing that we need to do is categorize our spending. Now Mint does a lot of the heavy lifting by importing all of our transactions, but it doesn't do the best job at knowing where you spend your money. For example, your purchase at the Apple Store might be categorized under groceries because it thinks you bought a pie. No biggie, just click the transactions button at the top of your screen and you'll see a list of all your charges. Go through the list and make sure every line is categorized correctly. In our experience, you have to change about half of them. You can also do things like add new categories, split charges into different categories, or if the item doesn't belong in the budget, click hide from budgets and trends. I use this category a lot for reimbursable expenses at work. This step is crucial, don't skip it. Otherwise, the information that you're analyzing is going to be flawed and of no use. But there are two added benefits to doing this. And that is, first, it forces you to look at every transaction that you spend every month. And this is helpful in catching errors. For example, if you go to a restaurant and the waiter accidentally moves a decimal place and charges you $50 for a tip instead of the $5 that you left him. Second, it's a good opportunity to face your spending every month. If you see Starbucks on every other line in your budget, it has a strong emotional impact if you're trying to break a habit. For us, this item used to be Chick-fil-A. In 2011, 2012, we probably had breakfast there four times a week and dinner two or three times a week. And we saw it every time we went to go categorize our transactions. It would be, you know, gas, groceries, Chick-fil-A, shopping, Chick-fil-A, blank, Chick-fil-A. It was horrible. Okay, enough about us. Let's assume you have your spending tracked to the max and you have a budget that looks similar to the one that we're gonna show you from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. We'll call it the Bowles Family Budget for Bureau of Labor and Statistics. To keep things simple, we're just gonna look at the middle 20% of income earners on the report. And if we take a quick look, we can see our Bowles Family makes $43,500 per year after taxes and spends about $42,500. Meaning that they're not spending more than they earn, but they're spending just about every penny of it. Looking at their budget, we can see where the money's going every month. They're spending $300 a month on groceries, $175 on restaurants, $1,200 on rent and utilities, $672 a month on transportation, and finally $272 a month on social security and pensions. Now go to your Mint account and click on the Trends button at the top. On the left side under Spending, click Buy Category. You see a pie graph, and as you hover over each category, you'll see your spending in each category. First, take a look at the chart overall and how each of the categories relate to one another. Does one slice of the pie take up half the chart? Maybe it's housing. If that's the case, it might be time to put finding a cheaper place on your list of things to do. Next, compare your spending to the Bowles family. Where do you spend less and where do you spend more? You'll probably notice one or two areas where you spend significantly more than average. Maybe it's transportation. Or alcohol but hopefully not both. Don't drink and drive, people. These are the areas you're gonna target first when you start to cut your spending. But remember, this is just an exercise in opening your eyes to your spending. The Bowles family isn't the goal. Remember, they're living paycheck to paycheck. To fully grasp how much you're actually spending, a quick trick from Mr. Money Mustache is to multiply each monthly expense by 173. This will give you a quick total of how much that item could be worth in 10 years if you had invested the money instead. For example, if moving into a smaller house could save you $400 a month, you could replace that extra bedroom with almost 70 grand in the bank every 10 years. For weekly expenses, multiply by 752. That weekly round of golf, it's really costing about $37,000 every 10 years. Now that's not to say you can't afford to play golf. The point of analyzing your finances is to recognize where your money goes every month. Then you can determine what you really want now and what you want later in life and make a plan to get there. Next week, we'll talk about what we would do if we woke up in debt. See you then. Bye. Bye.